Hi, it's Tuesday, it's 10 o'clock, I'm Victoria Derbyshire and we're live from New Broadcasting House. This programme can reveal that at least 20 ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are suing the church over child sexual abuse. One former elder, who says he was abused himself as a nine-year-old boy, accuses the organisation of protecting perpetrators. There are Jehovah's Witnesses, active Jehovah's Witnesses, that abuse children. And I know for a fact now that there are parents that haven't done anything about the abuse of their children by others because they don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. The church insists it complies with child abuse reporting laws. We'll bring you the full story in five minutes. Hi, welcome to the programme. We're live until 11 this morning. We're going to bring you our exclusive story in a few minutes' time, but I wanted to ask you if you are or were a Jehovah's Witness and you were sexually abused and you wanted to let us know what the circumstances were and what you were able to do about it, if anything, then do send us an email, victoria at bbc.co.uk. It goes without saying, you can remain anonymous. Some of you have already got in touch. Uh, this viewer says, I was abused by a ministerial servant for four years. I found the courage to tell my dad what was happening. Luckily, he ignored the elder's persistent request to keep it within the organisation and contacted the police. The ministerial servant was only found guilty of one incident, as that was the only date my teenage brain could pin down specifically. As far as I know, he's still practising in the religion and is serving as an elder himself, which really makes me worry for current and future victims in the organisation. And this, I was an elder and I reported a child abuser. I was deleted as an elder and I was told I was not loyal and I don't qualify to be an elder. And one more, I fell victim to this, also aged 10. I'm not sure what became of the perpetrator, but when his actions became known, there was essentially a cover-up. The authorities were never informed. If memory serves correctly, he wasn't even disfellowshipped, which means expelled from the congregation. Priorities A. There are more as well. We will read some through the programme. Do get in touch, as I said. Victoria at bbc.co.uk. You can message us on Twitter, hashtag Victoria Live. As I said, if you wish to remain anonymous, uh, then of course that's absolutely fine. Let's bring you the news first of all. Here's Anita. Thank you very much. Our exclusive story today, this programme can reveal that at least 20 ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are suing the religious organisation over historical sexual abuse by senior figures in the organisation. We've spoken to two women who were abused, one from the age of eight. A former elder who served in the organisation for 55 years has revealed for the first time that he too was sexually abused as a boy. The survivors told us that a two-witness rule set by the main governing body of the religion means there must be two witnesses to any sin in order for elders of the congregation to take action. The head of Parliament's all-party parliamentary group for adult survivors of sexual abuse has described it as a system that allows abusers to flourish. Our reporter Claire Jones has this exclusive film which contains some strong language. The Jehovah's Witnesses, a religious group that asks believers for their devotion, their loyalty and to faithfully follow the teachings of the Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs can be used to easily manipulate vulnerable people. If witnesses ever leave the organisation, they are shunned. And it sadly has led people to commit suicide. But now we've learnt that at least 20 former members who were sexually abused are suing the organisation. I've never spoken publicly about this before, even to my family. I was sexually abused from the ages of around eight, and my parents would be in the next room. I use the word buggered because that is exactly what happened. Some believe the church has protected the perpetrators. There are parents that haven't done anything about the abuse of their children by others because they don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. Their systems allow abusers to flourish. The Jehovah's Witnesses organisation uses the Bible as the basis for its teachings. Each group meets in what's called a Kingdom Hall, and that's made up of elders, 
ministerial servants and then ordinary members of the congregation. John Viney was an elder in the Jehovah's Witnesses for 55 years. His daughter, Karen, was sexually abused by another elder within the congregation. She reported the abuse and then wanted to leave the group. John disowned her, which he has regretted ever since. When I was an elder as, uh, and as a dad, I put being an elder absolutely first. Um, and that was a mistake. I get very emotional about this because I realise that my actions have affected others. I've affected others by disfellowshipping them, not just my family, others. I will have had a terrible detrimental effect on the lives of other people. I was sexually abused while I was a Jehovah's Witness from the ages of around eight to around 12. The situation that I was put in was to help this man make tea for everybody after the Bible study. So he would use that opportunity while everybody else was in the next room to touch everywhere that he wasn't supposed to touch. And my parents would be in the next room. Emma, not her real name, eventually confided in her friend about the abuse. When her dad found out, he called the police. Elders found out about the allegations and arrived at Emma's house to find out more. So they came round, um, all quite formal, sat in the living room, had a big long discussion. They go through a lot of scripture about why we should sort of maybe deal with it in-house and we don't need to be following the laws of the land. But they do ask you to go into a lot of detail, where you were touched, to what extent the abuse was, um, the location, and they, they ask you to, to thoroughly explain everything. All I can remember really is them sort of sat looking, just both glaring at me like, right, you just you need to repeat to us what happened, you need to tell us who it was. Um, they asked for quite gritty details, and I think my dad took over a lot because he didn't want me to have to go through it. Emma's abuser eventually pleaded guilty and was imprisoned for two years, but later returned to the organisation. Julie, also not her real name, was sexually abused by an elder as a child and was forced to stay quiet. It started from about eight. And how long did that abuse go on for? For several years. I think until I kind of got old enough to think, hang on a minute, this isn't right. So it wasn't until probably senior school where I kind of got savvy enough to start giving this guy a bit of a wide berth. Julie finally reported what happened to her to the police, concerned he may re-offend. This man that had sexually abused us all as children now had access to his granddaughter who was sleeping in his house on a weekly basis. The police responded very quickly and put in safeguarding measures. The way I understood it was that he wasn't allowed to be on his own with her whilst the investigation went forward. Anyway, fast forward a year and he went to trial. He was convicted and he was sent to prison. Now, years later, Emma and Julie are one of at least 20 people suing the church. Thomas Beale is the solicitor representing both women. A lot of my clients first go to the organisation looking for an apology and it's their attitude in denying what's happened or refusing to engage that ultimately leads to the clients wanting to bring a civil claim. If the claims are ultimately successful, then the individuals would receive compensation to assist them with trying to get on with their life. But some believe the abuse is still present in the organisation. There are Jehovah's Witnesses, active Jehovah's Witnesses, that abuse children. And I know for a fact now that there are parents that haven't done anything about the abuse of their children by others because they don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. They put being a Jehovah's Witness before doing the right thing and reporting child abuse. 
Sarah Champion, MP and Chair of the Parliamentary Committee looking at adult survivors of sexual abuse, has met with senior leaders from the Jehovah's Witnesses, but is not convinced they are safeguarding children. I mean, this is, this is child abuse. I'm deafened by the alarm bells that are ringing if that's the safeguarding that's in place. And that's exactly why the Charity Commission needs to be getting involved, because the, these establishments, these congregations have a duty of care to vulnerable children. The Charity Commission has been investigating the Jehovah's Witnesses organisation since 2013. A spokeswoman said the inquiry remains ongoing, but would not comment further. I'd like the organisation to acknowledge, if they won't go so far as to acknowledge the abuse that went on, to acknowledge that their systems allow abusers to flourish and that they will do everything in their power to protect vulnerable children, vulnerable adults and stamp out any corner where an abuser could be lurking. A spokesman for the Jehovah's Witnesses said parents and victims are informed they have the right to report the matter to the authorities. The spokesman said if a congregant has been guilty of child sexual abuse, elders inform parents with minors so that they can take measures to protect their children. I left about 12 years ago because the situation that was involving my family, my daughter who was sexually abused by an elder. During the interview, John unexpectedly revealed to me a secret he's been hiding for decades. I've never spoken publicly about this before. Only recently, even to my family and to my wife and, and, and kids, um, when I was a youngster, between the ages of about 9 and 13, a distant family member who was an active Jehovah's Witness abused me. Um, I use the word buggered because that is exactly what happened. John finally went to the police over 50 years later to report what happened to him. And you know how sad I am to have found out that that person went on to abuse other children and went to prison and died in prison as an abuser. Now what would have happened if I had had the courage and the common sense to have come forward? I didn't and that's the biggest regret I, I carry with me. And if you need any advice or support, uh, you can contact our action line, bbc.co.uk forward slash action line, or call 0800 077 077, where you can hear recorded information, and those lines are open 24 hours a day. Well, here in the studio is John Viney, uh, a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses for more than 50 years, reaching the rank of elder, and he says he was sexually abused as a boy and Labour MP Sarah Champion, Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Adult Survivors of Sexual Abuse. Uh, thank you both uh, for coming into the studio as well as appearing on our film. Um, John, I want to ask you first of all, you were a high-ranking member of this organisation and people, including your own daughter, were being sexually abused. What do you think about that? Obviously, it's a, it's a terrible crime. Um, I was so pleased that my daughter eventually had the courage to tell us, and then, and then the whole matter went to the police because we insisted on that, and that the abuser, who was an elder, was eventually found guilty and is now in prison. Mm -hmm. But I, I am convinced, because of the stance that Jehovah's Witnesses take, particularly the, the, the real fear they have of bad publicity, that if someone was to come forward and to, uh, to say that they've been abused, as I said on that film, it brings reproach on Jehovah's name, and that's such a powerful um, dissentive to stop people coming forward that I think that it, it's going on now. In fact, I know it's going on now, and there will be people out there that are being abused that will not be, will not be reporting it. Without going into details, you say you know it's going on now. Do you have evidence? Yes, I'm part of a support group. Um, it, and we invite people that are 
going through difficulties to, to contact us. So we are told by individuals that um, you know they have problems. Some, most are, are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem because when a person leaves the organization, maybe they're, they're, they, they just can't face it anymore. Uh, they want to get away from the memories. Um, often they then speak about it. And then, because they're now speaking against the organization, they get what's called disfellowshipped, which is like a shunning, an excommunication. Do you advise them to go to the police? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and in terms of the, 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 the shunning, in fact, when your daughter first told you that she had been sexually abused, she claimed, you disowned her? Well, after she was disfellowshipped, I mean, we, we helped her through the, the child abuse issue first. We're talking about your eldest daughter. My yeah. eldest daughter. But then, of course, she didn't want to be part of the organisation anymore. Um, once you are baptised, if you decide to leave, you are going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, she got on with her life, got a boyfriend, so she became disfellowshipped. It was a public announcement, and when you are publicly disowned like that, the family, all of the family, have to treat you as if you're dead. And that's what we did, because I was a good Jehovah's Witness. Even though you have now revealed today you yourself were sexually abused as a child by, uh, uh, by someone in the Jehovah's yes. Witnesses? Yeah. It, it, with my daughter, it wasn't the sexual abuse that, that um, led to us shunning her. I obviously knew she had been sexually abused. Um, it was the other, the, the other laws or rules, if you like, within the organisation that technically she had broken mm -hmm. that meant that she should be shunned. OK. Um, I want to talk to you about this two-witness rule, both of you, if I may. Jehovah's Witness tell us, if at least two people, the one making the accusation, and someone else who can verify this act or other acts of child abuse by the accused person establish the charge, then an ecclesiastical judicial committee is formed. I mean, it's just extraordinary. <laughs> it's, it's, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you it's based on a Bible edict, edict that I don't says. Care. And so, what do you say, Sarah Champion? Um, I, I mean, the whole thing is barking. And can I say, firstly, thank you for Victoria Derbyshire to exposing this, because most mm. other programmes wouldn't go near it. But also thank you to John for having the courage to come forward and say this. And I think John is an example of the deep indoctrination that goes on. Yeah. Because from the youngest age, the Jehovah's Witness is, is all that you know. It's completely all encompassing. Mm. The fear of being uh, shunned, you know, for your own parents to see you as dead. Mm. I mean, that is a pretty hefty penalty to go to speaking out. And then the um, the two witness rule is, is clearly barking because uh, unless it's a paedophile ring, uh, most, if not virtually all child abuse happens in isolation. That's, that's the whole way that it operates mm. so to be believed by having someone watching it uh, immediately rules out almost every case from going forwards and then of course the people you're reporting it to are very likely to be the abusers as well and they also told us the only way that a child abuser can gain access to children in a religious organization like ours which does not have any programs that separates children from their parents is through the parents themselves i.e to me that suggests i.e. parents have given some kind of permission or they are complicit we know that's not true from from the one of the women we spoke to in the film emma who made the tea after the meeting she's in a room next door a mum and dad are on that side a man goes in and touches her completely inappropriately mm. and abuses her mm. but you have to remember that um in jehovah's witnesses the elders are the next step down from god so of course you would trust them i mean that they they are the word of god mm. so why wouldn't you uh if they said oh like your child needs um additional uh, biblical studies uh i, I mean that, that would be seen as a wonderful thing that this person mm. is helping the child yeah. why would you question it sure it, it's it's deep the indoctrination let, let me let me go on with this Sorry, statement and you can come back john um the statement adds for decades decades, the organisation had educated parents about the dangers of child abuse and how they can protect their children. And when elders learn of an allegation, they comply with child abuse reporting laws, even if there is only one witness. And parents and victims are informed they have the right to report the matter to the authorities. What do you say to that, John? Um, that, that last piece is, is a very new piece of information. Their public statements have, have only ever said, we don't prevent people from going to the police, mm. which is a very negative view. So, um, 
it, it's, and I'd have to say as well that Jehovah's Witnesses tell lies. And so when they say that they do certain things or don't do certain things, I now know that that's not true. Right. Not, not all Jehovah's Witnesses tell Jehovah's lies, Witnesses, like not no. all people, not all no, Catholics, right, not all yeah. etc. tell lies. But John and I were also shaking our head when that bit about reporting it came up mm. because um, I had, after I spoke out about two years ago, I had a meeting with some of the national elders and they brought their lawyer along um, and they don't recognise the police, they recognise God, they don't recognise parliamentarians, they don't recognise any mm. other authority apart from God. So therefore that they, they didn't see it was their duty to report it because why would they? God is the person that is justifying them. And also they set up a, a judicial committee, an ecclesiastical judicial committee. Uh, is set up as long as according to an earlier statement that there, there are two witnesses to child abuse so they would deal with it in-house yeah it, it would be dealt with in-house obviously the abuser would be asked did you do it mm. and if they say no then that's the end of the matter I uh, I think the fact that you have revealed to us that you too were abused as a young boy is quite extraordinary mm. um, how do you feel about being public about that, John? Um, well, one of the reasons that people don't come forward um, is, number one, the shame. You think about it. When I was a lad and it was happening, I've got to be honest, I was so um, not understanding what was happening mm. that, that I didn't speak out then. Then when you get to an age where you think, oh, I should have said something, now you're thinking, oh, but if I say something, I'll realise I should have <coughs> said something earlier. So the whole thing is compounded. Um, I'm glad that I've spoken up now. Uh, I'm, it's an unusual situation because it means that almost like two generations of Jehovah's Witnesses have been abused in my family. So for them to say it, it is not a problem, it, it obviously is. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that from this appeal that you're making that, that, that many, many people will email you or telephone in to say that what they are saying is actually not true. Yeah. Um, how much does it play on your mind, the fact that you weren't able to, to re report this earlier? I got on with my life, I have to be honest. It, I, I can say it hasn't affected me, um, but I do know it has affected many, many, many hundreds of other people, even thousands of other people. Mm. So I've just but, got on with my life, but, but I, I know we, we need something needs doing because it's affecting lots of other people, and that's yeah. my main concern. But you're aware, I think you told us, that the, the person who abused you went on to abuse other people. And that's why there is a need for people to come forward. Mm. Let, well, they are. Let me read some messages. and they're all, they're all anonymous. I was raised a Jehovah's Witness until I left at 18. I was abused as a kid and felt like I had to cover it up because I'm male and he was male. I was raised believing homosexuality was wrong and it was a sin and it would mean I would be killed at Armageddon, so I kept it a secret. Eventually, I came out when I was 16, and I was put in front of the elders who asked lots of personal questions, including about the abuse, which they did nothing about. The only thing they did was isolate me from the rest of the congregation and advise my family to limit conversation. They treated me as though I were the danger and as though I was the abuser. I lost all my friends and most of my family. This viewer says, I'm a survivor of Jehovah's Witness child abuse. It was my father. The two witness rule meant he was never disciplined. He is still active in the church. When I spoke out, I was told to look for the good in my dad, like God has, and to forgive. Uh, and this, I was a witness until I was 17. I read with shock the statement that you received from the Jehovah's Witness uh, they made about child abuse and that they regularly tell the congregation how to protect their children. Mm -hmm. This is not true at all. No. At least it wasn't when I was a witness. Child abuse was never ever talked about. However, fornication, fornication, I beg your pardon, was a regular topic of conversation on the platform. Sex before marriage, dressing in a provocative way, which would have made brothers or men uncomfortable, was absolutely forbidden. And this was drummed into us all from as soon as we could talk. Um, do you believe that there are parents aware that their children are being sexually abused by members of the Jehovah's Witnesses and they're doing nothing about it? I, I do, because they will be conscious of the fact that by speaking up, they will be seen as a trouble family. And if you become a trouble family, you are likely to suffer internally. Mm. Um, 
the Charity Commission have mm -hmm. been investigating Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. since 2013, mm -hmm. so almost seven years. What's going on? Um, personally, um, I regularly and routinely receive letters from people who have been thrown out of Jehovah's Witness because of the abuse that they suffered as a child. I would be recommending that they do go to the Charity Commission. I know that the Charity Commission has had many, many concerns about this, as have the police. And for me, um, it, this is where the problem lies. The, the Charity Com Commission uh, can only judge whether or not they're meeting their charitable objectives. Um, the police can only act when they know that a crime is being carried out. So the Jehovah's Witness are playing a, a very um, delicate game at the moment of, of not publicly breaching either of those. So you've seen in your but piece... But if there's a safeguarding issue, that should be an issue also for the Charity Commission. Well, I know that the police are doing a, a very broad investigation at the moment, and if I could make a plea to everybody that's watching this or knows people that have been in this situation to um, either email me, email the programme, and we'll, we'll pass it on to those officers. Would you like to see the Jehovah's Witness organisation stripped of their charitable status? I personally believe that what they are doing is fostering abuse, enabling abuse and deliberately not reporting abuse. That must be in breach of their charitable objectives and so uh, at the very least I would want a complete investigation into their safeguarding which I do not believe either exists or what they claim to be safeguarding is not robust at all. That it, it, It's um, an absolute abomination that's what's going on. I was, another viewer, I was disfellowshipped age 16 for having sex outside marriage. Disfellowship means you are cut off from all your family and friends and they can't talk to you. While I was disfellowshipped and still attending meetings, a family member who was a Jehovah's Witness raped me. I was told not to report this to the police. I was made to wait another two months before I was reinstated into the congregation. He was disfellowshipped but then reinstated and the crime was not allowed to be reported. This viewer, I was abused, abused from my early teens until I married the man. God. As mm. a young, vulnerable child, I fell victim to the grooming and position of trust of an adult who I looked up to. After years of mental health issues, I then understood I was abused. And that then triggered my understanding of why I felt the way I did. Mm. When I went to the elders, I wanted to get a divorce. But I was told I did not have grounds for a divorce. It was absolute living hell. Can I come in on the specific point of the positions of trust? Because one of the things I'm campaigning on with um, the safeguarding charity uh, 318 is at the moment there is a legal loophole. So if you are a teacher or a social worker and you're in a position of trust over a 16 or 17 year old and you have sex with them, it's automatically a crime. If you're a faith leader, a sports coach, uh, that doesn't exist. It will be seen that the 16 year old is consenting. And what I would argue, particularly in the case that you've just read out, is the position of authority that elder had over that child is more than a teacher would. So, we, well, I'm asking the government immediately to change that legal loophole. Absolutely. I thought the sports coach loophole had been closed as a result of the footballers who appeared on our programme. And Tracy Crouch not. was the sports minister and she announced it. And Tracy Crouch is working with me because while she announced it in 2017, uh, all they've done is a review. And so the law has not been changed has not on that? not been changed at all. Wow, well that's my failing. I did not realise that. I absolutely thought that had been brought in. No, nope, unfortunately not. It's been kicked into the long grass along with other measures that could safeguard children. And one of the things that John was talking about was the impact. Um, next week I'm re launching um, a report. I've worked with over 400 adult survivors and the impact of being abused as a child is lifelong. So mental health, physical health, trust, it has an impact on your employment, on your relationships. So th the what we need to be focusing on as a country is prevention and then what we need to be focusing on is supporting survivors. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you John Viney for speaking out and speaking out on our programme. Sarah Champion, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, I'm going to read this statement again from Jehovah's Witnesses. They told us the only way that a child abuser can gain access to children in a religious organisation like ours which does not have any programmes that separate children from their parents is through the parents themselves, adding that for decades the organisation has educated parents about the dangers of child abuse and how they can protect their children. The spokesman also said when elders learn of an allegation they comply with child abuse reporting laws even if there is only one witness and that parents and victims are informed they have the right to report the matter 
to the authorities. He continued, the statement continues, if a congregant has been found guilty of child sexual abuse, our elders inform parents with minors so that they can take measures to protect their children. Uh, thank you for your messages. I have got some more which I will try and read before the end of the programme. And I do want to mention the Action Line uh, advice support line again, bbc.co.uk forward slash Action Line or you can call 0800 077 077. There are loads of uh, organisations that can help you and you'll get recorded information with that phone number. The lines are open 24 hours a day.